95% of uh, faults in a fire alarm system or in the wiring. Mm -hmm. Okay. Of that 95%, another 95% of the wiring problems are in the boxes behind the devices. Okay, now, what that means is that 5% of them are like in the wires between the boxes, but most of them you can find back there. Another 95% of all this uh, it falls into two categories. It either falls into shorts or opens. Okay, and don't get confused. A ground fault is just another form of a short. Okay, okay? so basically about 85% of what you're troubleshooting can be found as either shorts or opens. Okay. Now, let's say you got an outlet, right? Uh, let's say you got a house, and in the house is an outlet, right? And the power comes into the house. It usually comes in on three, three wires, um, but inside the house. You usually have whites, greens, and this is either usually a black, a red, or a blue. Okay. Now, I'm not counting the 240 volt stuff. I'm just counting the 120 volt stuff. Okay. Don't worry about the green. It's not a current carrying conductor. It's just a safety. Okay. Uh, the the power goes between one of these three colors in the white. Okay, This is all 120 volt theory and doesn't really apply to what we're doing except I, I need you to understand something about it. Now, the way this works is the white goes to one side of the outlet what am I doing? Yeah, and, and the, the the hot the red, the black, or the blue goes to the other side of the outlet. Okay. The reason it's called a short is, let's say somebody uh, uh, drops a heavy piece of metal across these two pieces of wire. Right? That completes the circuit short of the outlet. Okay. Okay. Now, at a 120 volt system in the house, what happens is either the breaker blows or the wires burn up because there's not enough resistance here to keep a tremendous amount of current from flowing through those wires. Uh, 120 volt power is called non-power limited. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. The stuff we deal with in uh, fire alarms, uh, instead of the household current now, you've got your fire alarm control panel right here. And you've got, oh, I don't know, you've got inputs to it like uh, pull station circuits. This is, we're just talking about conventional panels right now. All right. All right. So you've got these various inputs and you've got some outputs. Your horns uh, coming off your relays, whatever. All right. So, but let's say there's two wires coming off this panel on a horn circuit, a positive and a negative. Uh, yeah, we'll do it that way. Okay. And then. Um, you got a horn circuit here. I'm not drawing that very well. Okay. If you drop a, a strong piece of wire across this, okay, instead of the wire burning up or the breaker blowing, your fire, most of your conventional fire panel circuits are power limited circuits. And limited. I'm not even spelling that right, I'm sure. Okay, so what happens when you, if you short a, uh, a conventional fire alarm circuit, because it's power limited, because it's, the panel has that, that feature of power limiting, that's why we can use such light wires, okay, in a fire alarm circuit. The reason, because it's power limited, if you short this, it, it doesn't shoot like an unlimited uh, amount or 50 or 100 or a thousand amps through the circuit, it drops the power down and it, it, it's only transmitting maybe uh, uh, three milliampers or something, you know what I'm saying? It's very little, but it senses at the panel that there's a short and um, like on a conventional horn circuit, 
it, it'll go into trouble. Okay, all right. So that's a short. Okay. And what it basically is is it's two conductors that should not be touching that are. Let's see, you got that same panel, and you got a horn over here, and you got a positive and a negative. And uh, let's say somebody uh, is up in the ceiling and they trip over this wire and break it. Okay, at the end of this horn is a a resistor. So, so the panel, if if that resistor is there, say it's a 4.7k. Okay, maybe this panel thinks it should sense in standby mode, where it's supervising that circuit. Uh, it should sense uh, 17 milliampers. Well, if somebody breaks that wire, then that's going to drop down to about basically zero milliampers. There's going to be no flow along that circuit, right? And this panel going to trouble again. Okay, yeah. so your your shorts are two wires or or two things that shouldn't be touching that are, and your opens are there should be continuity when there isn't. That's your open. Okay. Your ground fault. Remember, I said it was a specific case of. A short. Mm -hmm. What that is is, let's say there's a conduit around this wire, and that's like a section through the conduit, and that conduit is grounded, of course, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if somebody drops that same heavy piece of metal not across both wires, but across one wire and that conduit, then you got a ground fold because it's shorted to ground. Okay frequently happens inside the box where the wires touch the box. Okay, So about 85% of your faults are just these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if this is a fire alarm panel, and there's two wires going here, and say these are horns, and out here is an end of the line resistor. Now, let's say you're troubleshooting an open, okay? Uh, one thing you can do that's real easy is, wait, this is the fire alarm control panel, and that's a horn, and that's a horn, and that's a horn. And let's say you can see the wires. You're out in a factory or something, mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's coming right out of the panel, and you, you can watch the wires go down a, a truss, and on every beam, there, on every upright, there's one of these. And uh, you, you notice the wires stop here. They come in and out of each device, and they stop here. So this is the first one. This is the second one. This is the third one. You know that's the way it's wired. Um, one of the easiest things to do with a horn circuit is you, you, you trip the panel, and you find out that this one works, yes. This one works, doesn't work, and this one doesn't work, no. The panel's in trouble already, right? Mm -hmm. Well, what you know is that the open is in this wire here. Now, because it's usually in a box, it's usually on the output side of this one or the input side of this one. Okay? Mm -hmm. So the way you troubleshoot an open is you go to the last one that's working, and it's either on the output side of that or the input side of the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, if Let's say these are, uh, this is not a, a horn circuit, but let's say these are pull stations. That's the symbol for a pull station. Okay. <clears throat> Let's say you pull this one, it works. You pull this one, it doesn't. You pull this one, it doesn't. Then you know that it's either on the output side of this one or the input side of this one. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, what gets tricky is that you very seldom know how they run. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, let's say... and the end of the line is here. The same way still applies, but you sometimes have to figure out which way it runs, and like if, if this one works, and this one works, and this one works, and this one works, and these two don't, you very often don't know which one's first, second, or third, or even where they're going. Okay, that's where it starts to get a little tricky. 
The other place that it really gets tricky is if somebody T-taps a conventional circuit, let's say somebody came off of here, right, these could not be working and the panel would never know about it because they didn't bring a return leg, you know what I'm saying? Okay. They didn't wire it correctly.